So I'm often asked, is the platform a product? And the platform is not a product. The applications, the services, the solutions on top of the platform, those are products. That's what gives real value to the customer. Now, Connorsburg has had a history of building platforms for various industries. We've had some big ones, we've had some small ones. And Cognify, you can think of it as a merger of all these technologies making one big digital ecosystem. So it is a result of years of development. So, okay, so what? What's the big deal? Why should I care? Well, imagine this. Now you can use your precious software resources on the business logic, on the secret sauce, what really you're good at, not have to worry about what I like to refer to as the necessary evils. Things such as identity management, billing, you know, cybersecurity, back-end logic, front-end logic, IoT management, all this stuff is taken care of. You get it out of the box. And for the first time, I think now we can do what I like to call customization. So from the same data set, your CEO, he can have one view. The CFO, he can see something else. Or your engineers, they can see something different. Ideally, everyone should have their own customized version of the application. I would argue that it's going to be safer, faster, and cheaper to build applications. And you'll have all the benefits of the cloud, and especially the elasticity of the cloud, meaning you have compute power on demand. So you're you know, your IT costs should scale along with your business. And finally, you'll be device independent. So the days of installations are over. All you need, you could be on your phone, you could be on your laptop, or you could be on something else. All you need is an internet connection and a web browser. OK, but what I really want to talk about today is the AI in Cognify, or the artificial intelligence in Cognify. And specifically, within the field of artificial intelligence, I want to talk about autonomy, which has been mentioned today. And it is an important area for Kongsberg. So autonomy can mean so much. We're all familiar with the cars, but you could also have a little dumb little drone with a small little PC, and you can give it simple commands, such as waypoints. And Kongsberg has been working in this space for years. You could have a more complex system, like our AUVs, our autonomous underwater vehicles, or submarines, you could call them. But we're also building much more complex system, and now we're trying to build fully autonomous ships. So then you need anti-collision logic, you need lidars and radars and cameras and all sorts of sensors to make these things fully autonomous. But with the platform and with the cloud-based framework, we can take autonomy one step further. Now you can imagine, now you could orchestrate, you could monitor, and you can operate on a completely different level. Now it's not just a single device, now you could have a fleet of ships, or you could have a swarm of drones. So I think it allows us to do automation and autonomy on a much grander and complex scale. And I would argue that this would be impossible without a cloud-based framework. So one important area of autonomy is machine learning. And people have asked me, well, what does machine learning have to do with autonomy? So let's take an example. Try and imagine a walk or a hike that you've done many times. And I guarantee you, the first time you did it versus the hundredth time you did it, you did something differently. Sure, you might have taken the same route. Sure, it might have taken you roughly about the same time. But either you changed shoes, you brought different clothes, more clothes, more food, less food, you changed something because along the way, you learned something. So in machine learning, this is called reinforcement learning. And kids and animals, and particularly dogs, are highly tuned to this way of learning. You reward good behavior, and you penalize bad behavior. So in autonomy, your metric could be anything. It could be fuel consumption. It could be time it takes from A to B. It could be number of accidents, and you don't want too many of those. And probably it's going to be some sweet spot. Something, you know, a number of metrics that you measure that at the end of the day allows you safe operations and hopefully most money in the bank. Another important area of machine learning is training, training your data set. And typically, this is computationally very expensive. But now, since you're in the cloud and you have this elasticity, well, rather than calling Bob in IT and say, um, Bob, I'm going to need 500 PCs, 
Now you can click a button, boom. You're the owner of 500 PCs. Now you can train your model for a day, or two, or two weeks, or two months, however long you need to, you shut it down. So I would, I would argue that you can only do machine learning on a massive scale using the cloud. Another important aspect of autonomy, I think, is simulation. So Kongsberg has many simulators. We have one here today, our maritime simulator, which is arguably probably the most advanced maritime simulator. So imagine your simulator, and now imagine your digital twin. And when I say digital twin, I mean a fully synthetic representation of your thing, be that a ship, or a complete oil rig, or a drone, okay? Now imagine you take your digital twin, you stick that into the simulator, and now suddenly you have a full digital representation, not only in the environment you're going to operate in, but also the device. So these two things coupled together, now you can do your machine learning fully safe in the synthetic environment. Otherwise, you'd have to deploy it, and you go, ooh, yeah, I, I hope it goes well. Whereas now you can safely do it in, this, in the simulator. And this is nothing new. The car industry has already been doing this. So they've been using game engines to train their models. So for example, Grand Theft Auto has been used because of its realism. You could do more, though. OK, now imagine you're the person who has to deploy. Okay, you're the person who presses that button to send off a ship or send off some drones. Well, because you could take all the latest data you have from the day, that could be satellite imagery, weather data, Twitter feeds, I don't know, it could be anything. You could simulate your entire planned operations, and every step of the way you could say, what if I lose engine power? What if I lose communications? What if, what if, what if? And once you're happy, you click deploy. But you could do even more. Now imagine you've sent off your ship, your drones are out flying, and suddenly something unexpected happens. There's a, there's a fire, or there's rerouting of air traffic. Well, you have the simulator, and you have the digital twin. You know how they're going to behave. You know exactly what they're going to do. So you can simulate, well, what is the behavior? And if you have to change it, you send out a little beacon, and you say, come home, turn off, turn the speed down, whatever you have to do. So it really allows you to always just stay ahead of the game. It basically allows you safe operations. There's so many other things I could say. There's so much cool technology and impressive technology in this company. I mean, we have advanced radios we send into space. We have super accurate GPS trackers that guarantee you 20 centimeter accuracy anywhere in the world. We have remote centers. We can remotely operate an airport. We can remotely operate ships. We have an abundance of sensor technology, with, and we have good sensor understanding. We could spray paint any of these devices with sensors. We're the biggest civilian provider of satellite imagery. So there's so much capability. So autonomy, I think, for us, it's not a vision. It's not insight. I think we can just grasp it. Finally, I'd like to say, and I'd like to stress this point, Cognify is an open digital ecosystem, so it's not just about Kongsberg technology. Any third party can add value and add services to our platform, so they can help make it more complex, more robust, basically more intelligent. So I hope all of this gave you some glimpse and some insight into the fact that the platform is so much more than the kind of obvious cloud services and offerings. And I personally think that the platform is going to play an important part as Kongsberg moves into the space of what I like to call industrial artificial intelligence. So thank you for listening. Thank you.